Welcome to Cyber Platter. This is Navya. This is a video on complete mediation, one of the secure design principles. Have you ever wondered why security systems sometimes fail despite having so many controls in place? One key reason is a lack of complete mediation. So today we will see what this principle is, why it matters and how to implement it in real world scenarios. What is complete mediation? The typical description says that it is a security principle that ensures every access to any resource is authorized and validated. And it does not rely on cached permissions or assumptions about prior authorizations. That means complete mediation is a security rule that says every time someone tries to access something, like for example, a file or a system, must be checked to make sure that they have the necessary permissions. It means there are no shortcuts. That is, even if the person has accessed the system before or he has had permissions from earlier, the system rechecks every time that this person is trying to access something. So this helps prevent unauthorized access or old permissions from being used to bypass security. So in short, Every action is re-verified to keep things secure. That is complete mediation. Now let's see some of the benefits of complete mediation in depth. First is that it ensures that no one can access resources they are not authorized for, even if they were allowed in the past. That is, if someone's permissions are revoked, same, complete mediation ensures they cannot continue accessing the system until they are re-verified. Next benefit is that it protects against stale or cached permissions. So relying on outdated or cached permissions, right, can meet unauthorized users in, especially if their access has changed. For example, if a user's role changes, the system checks their permissions each time, ensuring they only have access to what they are allowed to at that moment. Next benefit is that it prevents privilege escalation attacks. That is, attackers might exploit old sessions or cache data to gain higher level access. For example, if a user temporarily gets admin privileges, complete mediation ensures they don't retain these privileges after their task is finished. Next benefit is that complete mediation guarantees that security policies are applied continuously without any shortcuts. This ensures the organization's security remains strong at all times. Like for example, each access request is checked, so there's no risk of bypassing security rules. Next, it minimizes risk of security breaches. So without constant validation, attackers might take advantage of weak spots in security. That will be minimized by complete mediation. Like for example, if security checks are skipped, a hacker could use old credentials or session tokens to access protected systems, putting sensitive data at risk. So in summary, complete mediation helps keep systems secure by ensuring that all access attempts are checked. This reduces the risk of unauthorized access and security breaches. Now let's see some of the real world examples of complete mediation violations that have occurred in the past. First one is Amazon S3 bucket misconfiguration that happened in 2017. So in 2017, a misconfiguration allowed sensitive files from companies like Accenture to be accessed without the proper permissions. And this was despite access control settings being updated. So the system failed to continuously recheck the permissions on each request, allowing unauthorized users to gain access. The next one is the Facebook data breach in 2018. Attackers used a vulnerability in Facebook's view as feature, which allowed them to hijack the access tokens of users. This bypassed authentication and authorization checks so Facebook did not perform complete mediation on session tokens, allowing unauthorized access based on cache uh, information. Next example is the Slack API vulnerability in 2019. In this, even if the user's access to a channel was revoked, cached API keys still allowed access until the session expired. 
So the system did not properly revalidate permissions during every API call and this led to unauthorized access. So these are some of the examples where complete mediation was not followed. There are many other examples. For example, Google Plus API exposure in 2018, where Google Plus API exposed personal data such as uh, email addresses and profile details of users whose accounts were set to private. And then there is also Uber data breach in 2016. The attackers gained access using old credentials and API keys that were not properly revalidated. Now let's see some of the best practices of complete mediation. First one is that you need to ensure every access is validated against the latest access control settings. For example, in cloud platforms, access permissions are checked on every API request even if a user has prior access to resources. So the system revalidates permissions to ensure they're still valid at the time of each access. Next is to implement strong session management where user sessions are constantly revalidated for valid permissions. For example, a platform revalidates user session tokens every time they access a new service. If the user's role changes, their session will get updated to reflect the new permissions. Next is to implement access control lists, ACLs, to define permissions for every resource and ensure continuous checks. Next, you can adapt access control policies to dynamic conditions such as role changes or time of day restrictions. Like for example, a service dynamically adjusts access based on factors such as geographical location or time of day. Like uh, if a user session is accessed from an unusual location, the system may require additional authentication to verify the request. Like for example, multi-factor authentication. Next, use role-based access control that is RBAC to ensure users only have the permissions necessary to their role. So you can use RBAC to define roles, for example, administrator, member, guest, right? Users can only access data and features permitted by their assigned role. So changes to their roles trigger revalidation of access. Next, provide users with the minimum permissions required to perform their tasks. Like for example, in file storage systems, users are granted only the permissions they need to access specific files. If a user no longer needs access to certain files, their permissions are immediately revoked to limit their access to only essential resources. Next, implement logging and monitoring to detect unauthorized access attempts. For example, you can log every access attempt, including successful and unsuccessful login attempts. These logs can be monitored in real time to detect unauthorized access or anomalies. Next, use short-lived tokens that force re-authentication and revalidation of permissions. So when a token expires, the users must re-authenticate, ensuring their access rights are still valid and up to date. Next, regularly audit user access controls to ensure proper permissions are in place. Next, adopt a zero trust model wherever access request is verified, regardless of network location. For example, an enterprise can use a zero trust approach where each user's identity is authenticated and authorized before they can access any resource, regardless of whether they are inside or outside the corporate network. So these are some of the practices that organizations can use to ensure that complete mediation is enforced. And complete mediation prevents unauthorized access and minimizes security risks. So that's it for today, guys. I hope this video helped you understand what is complete mediation, why it matters and how it can be implemented. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and share our videos. That helps us a lot. I will see you in another video with another topic. Until then, bye-bye.